Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Owen Lernahan, and I'm a structural engineer from the London office. So see if this sounds familiar. In 1992, Thornton Tomasetti designed the Chifley Tower. It set a new precedent for tall steel frame buildings in Sydney. Well, currently, the Thornton Tomasetti designed Aspire Tower is again pushing the boundaries of high-rise building design in this region. 23 kilometers west of Sydney, Aspire Tower will form the centerpiece of a new master plan to redevelop Parramatta city centre. The concrete frame tower gently twists through its 90 storeys to a height of 306 metres, with the twin spires extending to 336 metres. This leaves the tower well placed in the race to become the tallest building in the Southern Hemisphere. Following our successful competition entry with Grimshaw last year, Thornton Tomasetti partnered with, ACOM's, with ACOM as a local engineering presence in Sydney and Melbourne. Together, we supported the architect's team based in these same cities. The tower consists of a vertical central core flanked by naturally cross-ventilated apartments on each side. The building's twist originally developed to maximize the daylight in both sets of apartments while still fitting the constraints of the site. The twist itself is achieved by apartment modules simply sliding relative to each other. The edges of these modules provided a natural line to incorporate structural walls into the building layout. Each wall then stepped between 20 millimeters and 100 millimeters at every floor to make up the total twist. The apartment walls are coupled to the core with link beams. In turn, these link beams support the access bridges between the core and the apartments. A second function of the twist is to open up the central communal areas within the tower. These, uh, these sky gardens have been a key design consideration from the very earliest concept sketches. The naturally ventilated spaces occur every six storeys, with void spaces and link bridges on the intermediate five storeys. Importantly, the continuous slab at these garden levels provides a solid structural diaphragm between all the vertical elements. Below level 33, the garden spaces are adjacent to the core only. At level 33, a central bank of lifts are terminated, resulting in much larger public spaces throughout the top two thirds of the building. To give an impression of scale, each one of these larger gardens could accommodate 20 stacked double-decker buses. Structurally, these larger gardens left two halves of the core unconnected. To resolve this, we introduced a story deep wall at the underside of each garden level. This then left the remaining five stories completely free of any unwanted crossing structure. <clears throat> the combination of these design components resulted in a logical structure that was tightly integrated into an exciting architectural design. Achieving this took a lot of collaboration, something that wasn't made any easier by the 17,000 kilometers and 11 time zones separating us in London from the rest of the design team in Australia. The collaboration relied heavily on technology, and everything from hand sketches to 3D models had to be tied together with regular video conferencing. I think the real success was the emphasis on transferring an understanding rather than just information. When they joined our team, ACOM commented on Grimshaw's good understanding of the structural principles. Since there's no overlap between our typical working days, the use of parametric models became essential. These provided live feedback to the architect in Australia while we were sleeping soundly in London. This really enabled the structure to be included in their design development studies. The end result is a new focal point for the future development of Parramatta and a new landmark building for the region. But more importantly, it's the introduction of a new typology for residential high-rise buildings, a sustainable, affordable, and high-density urban development with all the space of a real suburban community. I'd like to now introduce Lynn Simon, who will talk about the greening of our new San Francisco office.